This is the Podcraft Podcast. This is episode one for July 20th, 2020. Today we're going to review four beers. We're going to review a, a beer from Burning Beard, a beer from Pier, a beer from Horace, and it uh, uh, looks like we have Pier collabing with that beer, as well as um, uh, just a, a stout from Horace. <laughs> This is the Podcraft Craft Beer Podcast with Charlie and Chris. Today we're going to review a couple of uh, local beers here in Southern San Diego and um, just kind of introduce ourselves. This is episode one for July 20th, 2020. Good Lord. Already July 20th. It is already July 20th. Well, let's pop a beer. Let's do that. So I think we should start out with, uh, what do you want to start out with? The beard. So I think we're going to start out with a Dankness Visible, an IPA. Now, what do we got here? Burning Beard, local local brewery out of uh, out of El Cajon, California. Uh, Dankness Visible. It's a West Coast IPA. Go ahead and pop that guy. Ooh, that ain't right. Let's oh, see beautiful what we got boy. here. Great color. Look at that action. You're drinking more than I am today, it looks like. So the beard is uh, has been around for a couple of years in El Cajon. It's a great little layout. What do you think of the uh, burning beard together, Charlie? It's outstanding, in my opinion. So I guess we should introduce ourselves. I'm Chris. and uh, I'm Charlie. And Charlie. And um, so here we are in the episode one of our of our podcast. and Journey. Uh, Video only today, um, because we've been told audio. Video, audio. I guess that's audio. Thank no goodness. video. Thank because goodness have, it's uh, audio. Only. Yeah, exactly. Because we have uh, been told repeatedly we have faces for radio. Chris is apparently naked. So, <laughs> so here we go. This West Coast IPA, Charlie. What do you think of that? It smells fantastic. I hadn't had this before, but I think this was the first beer I had at. Uh, at Pretty Burning delish. Beard when they open. I Pretty believe it's delish. one of their the original The color is beers. fantastic. It is. I'm a big fan of the old West Coast IPA. They make a good can, too. The um, Dankness Visible. The old beard guys are uh, putting it out pretty good, I think. Absolutely. They, I, um, one of, uh, I, I'd say uh, Burning Beard is probably one of my most frequented uh, breweries uh, <laughs> living, living uh, closest to it. Well, it's East County. You got it right there at your doorstep, practically. It is on my doorstep. So, there's several breweries in El Cajon now, though. That's or in East County, at least. That's that's a plus for us. <laughs> there is, but uh, there is. seriously, there. This is just one of many beers that they have that are outstanding. It uh, seems to be that Dankness Visible is uh, pretty legit. I would agree. I, uh, I'm a fan. You know, I really I miss the uh, the West Coast IPA when I when I when I first started <laughs> drinking craft beer. That was uh, I remember um, you saying that. That was what you what well, you, you got. started out with something like uh, Sculpin was Green my favorite Flash beer, right? Their, yeah, exactly. The West Coast uh, IPA, West Coast IPA, which put them on the map pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's gosh, years ago though. I mean, now you have beers that have gone above and beyond. I mean, this is. Truly a good West Coast IPA. I'm not, uh, let me see what it says. 6.5% alcohol. I don't know if they put their IBUs or anything on that. Yeah, that, uh, taking a, taking a, a, a sniff of it there, you, uh, you definitely, the, the hops definitely, uh, definitely come through. I like some hops. For sure. I'm not interested in, um, you know, fancy IPAs as much as I am good IPAs. Yeah. So the um, so what we have West Coast IPA is definitely uh, a, a great hop profile. We uh, um, definitely it's definitely got that piney taste. That's the uh, it's got a slight bitterness at the end. So that's why I was wondering why they about the IBUs. I didn't see it posted on here, but. Uh, 
I'd go for it. I'll drink it. Yeah, I'll, I'd definitely drink that again. To. I'm a fan. Up the beard, it says. I'm a fan of uh, Jeff and Mike, the uh, the owners over there. Great guys. I don't know Mike that, or I don't know Jeff that much, but I know Mike. Mike's a great guy. Definitely a great guy. Interesting stories on both ends. They're uh, they've uh, they started something there in East County, and it's uh, it's working pretty well for them. It looks like, or it seems like. I mean, they. Uh, I don't know the brewer. Do you know the brewer's name? I know. Well, I know Jeff is. Uh, um, Jeff's the brewer, is I he? thought, isn't he? Um, Great. You know, I guess I, I believe he's the uh, We'll have to the get him brewer. on here and talk about it. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, the, uh, you know, the, the thing I like about the beer, like, uh, another one of my favorite favorite beers, uh, that Norm Corp they do. That's phenomenal. It's just such a clean, crisp beer. Well, we could go through the whole list of what yeah, they have that's I, delicious. That's why we're going to do this, so we can do nothing but support burning beer. No, I'm kidding. I agree. All their beers are delicious, in my opinion. I mean, they've truly made some outstanding Berliners, too, back in, uh, I think it was the third anniversary we were there. Third? Second anniversary, Second maybe. Second or third. Gosh. They jumped out. Yeah, those were amazing. In yeah, my I'm personal definitely opinion. definitely a uh, fan of that anniversary party. If uh, um, you really want to see what the beer is about, uh, make, make sure you uh, you make, I believe it will be their... Their fourth anniversary. They already had their fourth one. Was it their fourth this last year? So their I fifth missed it. anniversary. Yeah, it was a. Uh, they they definitely know how to throw a party. Yeah. What else do we got here on this? So the. Uh, well, what else is uh? So what's uh? What's the latest, Charlie? What's the uh, latest hoedown in the uh, beer industry here in San Diego? Yeah, that's uh. Yeah, what do you know? I don't know a whole lot. It's, I mean, I think it's tragedy that we've uh, we've lost some uh, fine beer establishments like Tornado. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely one of my uh, uh, my favorite local craft brew beer place. Uh, it was probably the first place that I uh, the first beer bar I think I ever went to was was Tornado. It's a good start. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> good lord, that's yeah, it was crazy. Definitely, uh, I didn't come to watch. Yeah. So let's uh let's move on to this next beer. All right. Dive in. What do you uh, what do you got there? So you got the uh, the Pier Thousands of Money Pure Project, which is a uh, so Pier is a local brewery here in uh, in San Diego. I also I think they're probably four years old as four five. well. Yeah, um, four Miramar. or five years. They've uh, uh, they're in Miramar. The uh, so this. This thousands of money is a is a single hop IPA featuring my favorite hop mosaic. These guys, this is a great beer. They've uh, done this up right. Let me tell you, I had this beer and several others at uh, my daughter's wedding, as a matter of fact, and it was a total hit. You did have a uh, you had a keg of this at your at your daughter's wedding. You know the thanks um, to you, I believe the the first beer um, that I that I waited in line for <laughs> at any brewery yes. uh, was at was at Pier, and it was uh, it was thousands of money. Uh, maybe gosh, three years ago is that I think the first the first time they had put it out. First release, yeah, yeah, and I uh, I think um, uh, one one image I have from that day it was it was extremely hot. The uh, the, the the I remember during I was that there. day. Um, my sister being in town and I tried to convince her to, uh, to come over and, and, and sit in the sun with me, but that's not a, uh, she's from Minnesota and, and that's not an she ideal, been, uh, Southern she California She would have been one. scorched like the wicked witch of the West. Yeah. She probably <laughs> would have looked very similar to what you did when you finally made it in that brewery. You were, uh, I was so, rather pink and puffy. I, um, I showed up over there at about 8.30 in the morning, and then I think you texted me or I told you I was in line, and then you came over and were probably 45 minutes behind me in line, which was probably a ridiculous amount of people. It was well worth it, though. Definitely well worth it. Yeah, so I uh, when you walked in the door, I had a taster. You looked like you were about to die of heat stroke. I was parched, and to uh, put it uh, lightly. I had a taster of this beer for you. When when you walked in and you were like that is that's I think it's probably why it's one of your Give favorite. Give me beers. all you got. Kept you I alive. Think I said were my next two words. Or yeah. Statement. <laughs> Definitely a good beer. I'm not, this uh, the, it's a hazy. The, the nose on that. 
or murkiest, so, uh, as believe, Pierre would put it. Murky. I believe they do say uh, murky. They don't say the, hazy, um, that's for sure. They are, what are they, what are they? They say embrace the murk. Yeah, embrace the murk. Is what it murk. says on the uh, the back of their uh, their cans. So Pierre is, is one of the coolest uh, breweries in town, for sure. Well, you they're, know in, they're in Balboa, they call it. It's near Balboa Park, but it's not in the park. blocks out, yeah. of, uh, out of the park. And then it also in Carlsbad, so anybody from the they north? Just opened the Carlsbad, the village, I believe. I mean, if you don't try this place, you're crazy. And if you don't try the bird, the beer, you're crazy, too. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would agree. I'm a big, big fan of of beer. Big fan of this IPA. So the the nose on it is great. It's Definitely smell that uh, the, that that hop coming through that mosaic hop. Super mouthy. I mean, it's just soft on the palate. Completely no bitterness. It does have a great mouth feel. Just so smooth. It's just super citrusy. I'm a hazy, murky freak. I think. I'm a fan. I uh, I'm a fan of the uh, you know at first when when that style came out I think almost like you know like like anything I guess yeah, it's very popular to, very popular maybe had to grow on me a little bit but I definitely uh, the the mouth feel of those like beers. sours with me they had to grow on me yeah the uh, that my, was that was a a trek Let's like anything a journey again you know I mean I think uh, I think you start off drinking um, you know like a like a pilsner right yeah. and then you yeah good pilsner right a good pilsner and then you uh, you know, I, I mean, I think I did pale ales for quite a while, and then IPAs and West Coast IPAs, and the, the hoppier I could get, the better. Wow. To be honest with you, I think I started with like six kegs of uh, West Coast IPA. You know, after sh- making the switch, I mean, actually, I, I made my own beer for a while, which was pretty interesting. But uh, I think my brother in law is better at it than I ever was. But uh, I am a the best taster of beer that you can find. I agree. Because I will drink it all I day. agree. You know, the, I never really got into uh, to brewing. And some of our friends were, were uh, big into homebrew for, oh, yeah. for a little while. And I think, you know, my, my reasoning behind it was JP. Um, I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to pay for the um, the equipment. And we had, uh, at that point, we had a connection uh, where, where we would get some Carl Strauss kegs yeah. uh, rather, rather cheap. And the um, it was... Like it was almost cheaper than water where I <laughs> where I live. So the uh, um, it, man that that was uh, that I'd be was a drinking great beer every so day the, then. So I didn't want to make a terrible beer when I could drink a good beer um, for cheaper. Well, that was I had a connection uh, back in the day at uh, Green Flash, and that's what I did. I hit him up, and he was extremely generous. Let's put it that way. I mean, just extremely generous. And so that's what I did. I drank Green Flash West Coast IPA. I mean, I mean, fifteen gallon kegs, not your your five, you know, six doles or whatever they call them. You know, none of that. It's just straight out, you know, fifteen gallons at a pop of West Coast IPA to the that's point a, where uh, I'm like, I need something new. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of that uh, that West Coast IPA, especially that's right, that. That was definitely. That's uh, right, I told you, I bumped over to the barley wine and went, no. Oh, Looky here, <laughs> the old the old barley wine, the uh, um, yeah, no, I like it. That's a uh, so so I'm getting pure, pure project. Definitely got some awesome murky beers, as they say. I like to call them hazies, but that's just me. <laughs> kind of hazy myself. I like it. Kind of like the weather here in San Diego at times. You know, I'm a fan of that, um, of the IPAs, but I think, um, recently I have, I, I, I think I've been more on, on the stout bandwagon. 7.1%, my friend. A little notch up from Definitely. the, uh, dankness visible, but it you can't even isn't taste that, yeah, you, for sure. you, 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 that, that could be a dangerous, uh, 7.1%. Yeah, if you want to drink for effect, this is the one to go to right here, <laughs> right off the bat. 7.1 to 6.5, right? Sebo? Yeah. 6.5. We should yeah, probably they, mention that Stevo's here doing our he is, audio we have our, for us. Uh, our, our techie extraordinaire. Yep, Steve is... we uh, couldn't do this. We couldn't even rub two sticks together without Dragging us, there. kicking and screaming <laughs> through this uh, through this podcast. We uh, He's on the on the back end there making sure... Thanks uh, so much. Should, you should hear what we sound like live. It's amazing <laughs> yeah. the work he's going to do. He's going to uh, make it happen. He's going to make it sound like the uh, 
<laughs> you cut this out, Steve. Jersey boys. <laughs> so the um. Hmm. My bad, Dad. <laughs> oh, we might be in trouble. Yeah, we just shot ourselves in the foot right there. So the uh, so the thousands of money. I was uh, you know, Peter. I probably drank more um, murky IPAs from that brewery than than maybe any other. Yeah, because they put um, out more murky IPAs. Than yeah, or, yeah, they definitely. If you're um, into hazies, that's the place to start. I would say that. I mean, although Beard has new damage, and what's the other one they have? The something of haze or. I can't remember the other. They got another hazy. I can't remember the name of it. But new damage is legit. But let's let's talk about this uh, this thousands of money. How we acquired that keg? Yeah, for the you know, wedding. They, um, yeah, a couple of years ago, the uh, um, when we were trying to put together that uh, the beer list for your for your daughter's wedding. Um, yeah, we just reached out to uh, to Pierre. Um, and uh, and requested a, a keg, and I think we kind of talked. We, we we had said we would take any hazy IPA. We um, wanted thousands of money, but thousands of money would have been like the uh, like the kind of dream shot, right? Yeah. Like we didn't think we'd be able to get it because I don't. I, I I think it had, it was either just coming back out or something. But the uh, yeah, they had, they weren't sure they were going to have it available, right? And we got we were in there early, so or you were in there early, and uh, um, we went from. Uh, hey, you know, we'll get you something to, you know, boom, guess what I got? Yeah. No, we were definitely excited. I think Robbie had asked uh, um, what we would really like. And I said, you yeah, know, ideally, uh, that, that thousands of money. But the, uh, man, that was a that was a pretty good uh, little tap list you had there. You had a couple of beard. Um, Just strung out on lasers. Strung out on lasers. Phenomenal which beer. Which is an awesome, awesome beer. I mean, probably... You know, right up there, new damage and strung out on laser is probably my top two at uh, at the beard. At the beard, yeah. Other than their their uh, Berliners, which are awesome. You know, the beard. The the thing I like about every beer that you have out there is is to style. They yeah. they do a great job of, of just a super yeah, super wide range around. of they're, beers. They're legit on every every level. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, it wouldn't be they wouldn't be where where they are if they weren't. So yeah. It's a really, really cool space. That that little back room. They uh, for those of you that don't know that that brewery has a uh, has a small room in the back, and I think barrel you can room. rent that the barrel room for rather uh, uh, for for a rather small fee. Uh, get get you and some of your friends over there and uh, get good beer on tap. Absolutely good beer, but the uh, the list on uh, that that wedding day was McKellar Passion Pool. The Keller Passion Pool and Strung Out on Lasers, thousands of money, and then uh, let me think real quick. You had a, uh, uh, didn't you have a guest that brought his own keg of yeah. Coors Light? Dr. D. Dr. D. Yeah. Yeah. So the... Uh, Dougie Doug. For those of you that, that go to weddings just to drink, this gentleman brought his own keg to drink. Of Colorado Colorado's Premium. finest. Finest beer. Yeah. Well, maybe you know. And that, you know what? He went home with like bullet. a full keg. I think. I think he did. I think there was only one person drinking <laughs> that, so he brought over sixteen gallons and went home with fifteen point eight. Yeah, pretty much. Then I think I think that keg had sat in his yard for it was something. warm the back seat of his it car or something warm. for a few weeks. <laughs> I don't know if he drank too much more of it. Yeah, we'll have to get that. We'll have to get Doctor D here to to fill us in on that. You uh, might have to. That's category. probably what we need for this podcast is Good a doctor Lord. sitting on the couch. Oh my god, at, at the ready. Yeah, his his muffled loudness. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but uh, he's a good guy. Good fun. The um the other yeah the other thing he had was a giant cooler full of uh, bottles, magnums of sours, and oh, uh, he had a legit he had crazy. List. I remember. Duck, duck, goose in there. That was uh, that was what uh, the bride and groom drank at their table. At the head table. The duck, duck, goose. That uh, I think we each got a bottle at uh, up at the Abbey that one day. Didn't we? We did. We uh, it was Christmas in July. We scored. Um, we uh, we shot up there first thing in the morning and uh, waited out in the sun. And uh, yeah, came through. Uh, came no, through that was great early. Beers. It was early. It's like it was the crack of dawn early. I think we got up there. Well, I, they only had a handful of bottles of uh, Duck Duck, 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 Duck. And, uh, and that's what we went up there for. Still waiting for my Izzy bottle. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, you can, uh, you'll be waiting for I don't for even that. need the bottle, I just need to taste it. Yeah, you know, the, um, I've actually, the closest I've came to that bottle of, uh, that is a Isabella Proxius, yeah. uh, that it was a, 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 a uh, wild ale that was made with, uh, I think the, you know, rumor has it, the, um, the, uh, the culture, so it was, I mean, I, it's not rumor, I mean, I guess they're, uh, it happened. They're, they're, um, it was Tomei Arthur, um, Vinny uh, from, from Russian River. Uh, hey, Vinny. To, hey, Vinny. <laughs> uh, it was uh, Allagash, Dogfish Head, and Avery Brewing, I think. And they all made a mistake and made Izzy. Yeah, no, I think they, they went on some <laughs> Belgian beer tour together. Oh, okay. There you and, go. Um, and they came home with, uh, with some cultures. They had, I don't know, smuggled out. Very wow. similar. I think it was the same way. You, know, you ever watch... Um, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. So, you know how um, they got the watch out of, you know, seven years and uh, or however long the, uh, the the guy's dad was in Vietnam, you know, and he was, uh, he was a POW. You don't remember Did I that? miss that part? And he, uh, you know, the guy brings in, he shows up and gives his kid, and he's like, you don't know what your dad had to do with this. Seven years. You know, he had to smuggle this or whatever. <laughs> Oh God! So the, I, I think that's the same I, way they. I apologize for uh, not think, knowing. That. I think that's the same way. Maybe they I just blocked that. that out in my mind. Exactly. That'd be a terrible way. No, but the uh, so 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 lucky for whoever was able to get a bottle of that. They um, they got together and made this beer, and and everybody got uh, um, x amount of cases of this. I I, I think they made one hundred cases, and I think at the time they there was a hundred uh, cases. Yeah, I think that was the limit of it, you know, wow. which would have been, I guess, 1,200 bottles. But the um, uh, when when it originally sold, they gave the option, I think it was the, the club members, or there was a beer dinner or something, and this is just kind of coming off the fly, something I read a while, a while ago, so I could be wrong. Uh, a little bit, uh, some of the details. But the, okay, the, just, you know, the chime in story. anybody who knows the real yeah, exactly. story. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, <laughs> Vinny, if, uh, if you're listening or, or tell me, uh, go ahead and, and drop us uh, an email and, and, and tell hey, us the story Vinny. at uh, the podcast, podcast at gmail.com. We, uh, you, you can brush up our story. You can uh, let us know uh, where, where we were amiss. Because we're sitting at a nice place having some cracking beers. Let me tell you. That's it. The uh, so so they uh, they end up you know they they come home with uh, uh, with some culture some wild yeast that they had brought back from from Europe. They ended up making uh, somebody gave them beer. yeast. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Um, so they were you know they're look yeah. Amazing trip. Just think of all of the beers that, that those breweries have put out. So you put those guys together. And those are, it's like that. Like if you were going to put a Mount Rushmore of craft beer, like a love it'd child. be like those five it's like guys. like a love child uh, culture. Right. So the so they came back, they and made the this Americas. beer. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think they gave the guys the option of buying like a case or, or X amount of there was a beer dinner or something at, uh, at Lost Abbey. And they gave the, the people the ability of buying this beer. Well, so now, fast forward to now, and they're, uh, um, these bottles are going for, for a crazy amount, hundreds of dollars. The, uh, um, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, I, I actually bid on one at a, at a, um, at an auction, a, uh, at, at the Lost Abbey. So I think it was, um, I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, I no, I think out. I had ran to Horace to pick some beers up and on the way back at, at Lost Abbey, they had a, uh. Like a Christmas in July, or I think it was their their they do a fundraiser every every summer for uh, oh that uh, for the Marine Corps. Same thing that we got duck duck at uh, maybe the year before, and we uh, um, I a, a, a gentleman I know from from the Los Angeles area a uh, a guy on uh, um, on Instagram beer snobbin uh, for uh, he he had asked me to um, to go ahead and. Uh, it was two beers that he wanted. They, they put three bottles on. He wanted two of them. Uh, I think it was Veritas 4. Um, hmm. I think was was the bottle of, of Veritas 4, which Sounds is a super good. rare. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, they're on you know, Veritas forever later than 4 now. And um, and the other bottle he wanted was a, was a bottle of uh, Izzy. So the uh, um, when I went in there, they had... Uh, uh, they had Originally, they were going to do the... The cable car, they were going to do, I think it was cable car, it was uh, Izzy, and it was this um, Veritas Ford, um, the yellow bus, I think was the name of it. Just, and and uh, they were going to do all three of those as one 
as one three three box container. Well, they they elect you know they were gonna they decided they're gonna make a little bit more money for charity, and they did three separate uh, three separate containers. Um, you know, two of them had two other bottles that were phenomenal, and um, the uh, the third one was the main star. So so um, Beer Snobbit had said that he wanted um, he wanted the uh, the Izzy, and he wanted the um, the lost. Uh, um, the yellow bus, I think is what it was. So, so I went up there, and uh, there was one bid on each one of the, the containers, <laughs> or each one of the uh, the auctions. They had three pages for each one of the auctions set up, in hopes that you know somebody would come up and the the first bid was was whatever ten dollars uh, a piece or whatever, and uh, and the um, we uh, you know I looked at the first name and it was it was Jay Wakefield. From uh, so it was Jay Wakefield had a proxy bidder bid not at, for him. At, wow. uh, at the Lost Abbey, and they um, so the the proxy bidder was one of the one of the managers there. So I walked in and um, and I ordered a beer and uh, I'm like, hey, uh, what's going on with these auctions? And um, I I, uh, I went over the top on them and uh, on both of the beers. I didn't have a whole lot of time. I couldn't sit there for the three hours. So the uh, and it was going to a good charity. Uh, so. Um, I and you know I, I I just went I pushed all the chips in, so the uh, um, we went max bid and uh, I ended the uh, that was the end. It of was it. over. It was <laughs> so the next day I was like, hey, listen, I, I got to take off. I don't have all day, all day to be here. I got this bid in for this guy. I'm definitely good for it. You know, give me a call when I win. And um, that night at, at whatever six o'clock he called. He's like, hey, you won them both. He's like, yeah, funny story. You you ended the auction. That was literally it was over. He's like, <laughs> that's a but, great uh, story. But uh, Jay Wakefield, uh, Tomei said to, said to Jay Wakefield that he was willing to match those first two uh, bids that he would uh, that he would release a, a third set. So uh, Tomei really? reached into his cellar and uh, pulled out an extra set. And he matched. And, and Jay Wakefield matched those. So in the end, uh, beer snobbing and and we should uh, hit up Jay Wakefield. And Jay Wakefield uh, raised a, a, a crazy amount of money. I know. For, I remember for the we went up there and picked that up. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, no, that was they. they there was bets. The uh, the, the uh, staff members at Lost Abbey when we went to pick it up. That girl's like, we were making bets as to whether you were gonna gonna show, show. up and pick it up. <laughs> it was definitely a, uh, a, a, a an extremely large sum of money to drop at a brewery. Yeah, but I mean, for charity, I mean, good lord, who cares? that's really I it. Mean, that's you know. Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for real. Like they, um, people, you know, do whatever they want. If they're going to put up beer and people are going to pay for it, you know, what a better way to do something. No, it was great. Yeah. That, uh, so, so I, I actually, I had in my, uh, in my hands for about 24 hours, I had a bottle of Izzy. Yeah. So to make a, as a matter of fact, a very short story, extremely long. There I think it my is. wife almost passed out when you told her how much we, Paid or you paid for that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we we drove up there. We brought the Bronco up there. Yeah, we. Uh, that you know, was entertaining was, alone. <laughs> that that definitely was uh, was entertaining. It was it was a delicious day to say the least. And we didn't even drink the beer that you had proxy. <laughs> I think though, you know the. Um, I think they, if I remember correctly, they they did give us a free beer when we picked it up. You know, I guess you. Uh, yeah, they gave us a ticket for one. They gave us a ticket for a free beer when we picked it up. So, um, you know, beer snobbing, they, uh, they thank you, and I thank you for the free beer by, by proxy. So the uh, next up, we have a, uh, a second beer uh, that, that Pierre was part of. We have a um, Bahorus uh, Spirit Talon. Uh, so the the side of this um, the side of this bottle says Imperial Stout aged in ap- uh, American brandy barrels for nine months, then aged in 1792 full proof El Cerrito li- uh, uh, liquor single barrel select bourbon barrels for an additional eight months. So you have a uh, an Imperial Stout aged for nine months in, in brandy barrels uh, and eight months in uh, in a in a single barrel. I love me barrel. some Horace, that's for sure. I, uh, you know, so, so what this guy this does. This guy could make chocolate milk and I'd buy it. That's just, I mean, he, spirit talent. He definitely knows what's, uh, um, that his stouts are unbelievable. So ooh, this, ooh. uh, this little bottle has been, uh, been sitting on Holy it for a little, stout, for a man, minute. That's some, 
That's some legitimacy right there. So the uh, the nose I mean, on that's just it's definitely murky. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's dark. So the uh, wow. So that Horace has it has a crazy story. You know Dude, the, that's perfect temperature right there. I don't know what we did right, but gosh. Yeah. So the. Uh, so when we came over, you know, we, we obviously left your stouts out, and and, uh, and I'm a big fan of drinking my stouts at, at uh, 50 to 55 degrees. Uh, make sure you can get that full taste and 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 everything in there. You get the barrel, get get up, uh, get everything. Okay. Man, this bottle is crazy. Hold on to your hat. Yeah, this is 13 percent alcohol. So it's a 13 percenter, and you literally don't taste any I'm any not alcohol. Tasting at all. Any alcohol? I'm just tasting just deliciousness. I mean. Yeah, this has been a so journey. Just chocolate. This has been a journey for me to go through, and because I was so hard into the West Coast, and then I jumped over to the Pales, and excuse remember, me, and then I went to, you know, barley wine, and then I, you know, back to hazies, and good lord, you know, you were doing though, you were doing stouts, and I remember when me and all the guys were were doing. Uh, um, West Coast IPAs and uh, I'd already been through. You that. had been through there. You had went down that uh, that road and um, I, I went up and time. down the. Down Unless the, we had no culture. Yeah. <laughs> Amateurs. Is what oh, yeah, exactly. Amateurs. <laughs> so the uh, man, the whew, gosh, man, that smells just so roasty. It, it it certainly does. So you got a little chocolatey, uh, yeah, um, chocolatey taste there. The caramel um, something. The barrel in there. Barrels are the, always the top of the nose for me, but I mean that's just not my favorite. But it definitely doesn't come through. You know, a lot of stouts you get you get them that um, if they, you know when they're that high in alcohol, they 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 definitely bring some heat. You can definitely taste that alcohol. Yeah, but I don't I don't know what else they've got rolling in there. I mean, there's there's it's just a imperial stout. Is that what it said? It is, yeah. It's just his base stout. You know, I Holy think a lot of uh, a lot of what Horace does is is adjuncts, right? You know, yeah. I mean, his his you know, I don't he, care he what he does, long as he makes good beer. on uh, on his beers and coffee and any um, you know, he's like uh, did you something with Mostra at some? some he's point? done, yeah. He's done. He, this guy, um, uh, you know, he he also works with uh, Maria or M A R E A uh, Roastery. He does a lot of a lot of stuff with them, but he um, well, he I, doesn't. I have to admit up front that my absolute favorite stout, yeah, is that proper dose. Yeah, you're a big fan of that proper dose. Good lord, that I'm is. I'm a big fan of that. that They're is coming out with that again. Legit. Here, I, mean, I got I got an email that we can uh, that that uh, I believe September it'll be the two year anniversary oh, of, of when it uh, when it originally came out. I remember the beer. first time we were sitting back here and we tasted that. JP, you and I were here. A couple other buddies were here, and you cracked that thing open. I'm telling you. I was stunned how delicious that beer tasted. That was a that was a night we uh, I think everybody went in and, and grabbed a uh, their their best bottle of stout and um, Spirit Town. Mm. I think we uh, maybe not their best, but we 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 had five I think five bottles of stout. Uh, we had uh, this is out number of, three of them. This is after a lot of IPAs. <laughs> no, I think it was I. It was cold. It was in the fall. I remember oh, yeah, there was yeah, a yeah. few more guys here. Yeah, we had a fire going, you know. Uh, but 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 the uh, I think we we did a monster tones and we did uh, um, modem tones vanilla and uh, and we did that proper dose uh, proper as well as a couple dose. couple other beers. Mm. Your favorite was proper dose. Absolutely, I was a big fan of that 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 uh, monster tones and. Um, and the proper dose, I think, was was second that evening. I mean, and, you know, I don't. I think um, you know, Horace doesn't put out his uh, his his bottle counts, but they're they're super small. It's uh, it's a difficult brewery to uh, to get a hold of. He actually put out recently that if you're if you're uh, not a club member this year, uh, your your chances of getting a beer. Are, I don't know that he'll do public releases this year. Chances are slim to none. But the. Uh, uh, but fortunately, we'll we'll get our hands on that again. So so I don't know if the if the they were both phenomenal beers. Well, I like beer, and this is definitely good. Yeah, this is a good beer. This is Spirit Town. It's a great name too. Sure, a good beer. But I'm so the I'm thirteen percent. 
Yeah, that was it was. Uh, I think that was the second barrel aged beer that Horus put out of his brewery. Warden's not going to be happy with me this evening. Yeah, she will not be happy. Oh, well, that's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you there. <laughs> it's yeah. not much you can say. <laughs> Steve, get into some of that. You have to help yeah, us Steve, on that. Steve, you might one. want to try that one. Good lord, that's a tiny bottle. And so the um, gosh, I would say that good. that beer i mean that's phenomenal yeah yeah that's a that's a go to right there I mean, you got a, I, I, it's a small bottle it's not even a big bottle no it, it definitely is it's we're used a, to the 24 well, ounces 22 the yeah, bomber the, the 650 milliliters and this is uh, whatever a 12 ounce bottle maybe maybe 16 that's a uh, 12 right yeah i don't know the uh it's that thing's uh it's bringing the smoke that's a good uh that's a good taste in beer right there. Definitely excited to have had that. You were tasting that, Stephen? That was a, a, a one-time release, uh, uh, club only. Um, so whatever, 225 bottles, 250 bottles, something like that. They, um, phenomenal. I, man, I'm, I'm giving that a, uh, please get a little bit of that. I mean, I gave him the tiny glass. There you go. Don't, don't give him oh, too much of it. We're trying Lord. to uh, put out a phenomenal. That's going to be a. Whew. Good luck, buddy. That was a pour. That's a. Uh, that's unbelievable. Mm. So should we uh, should we hit our final beer? Should we? Why not? Or are we. Uh, should we run this? You want to run this gauntlet or do you want to save that guy for another week? I think you got to tell a story. Man, one, so of your, the, one of your, one of your, uh, one of your, one of your, you're back in uh, Minnesota stories. I don't, uh, let's I, go a little, do, do we have any fair state stories? No, outside of those guys, uh, they make pretty good beers. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty a fan. good. <laughs> I'm a fan of them. Um, so our final beer here that we're going to go with uh, is the Horace Snatcher's Grass. Uh, it's a Woodford uh, Reserve Double Oak Bourbon Barrel Imperial Stout. With coffee and hazelnuts added. My favorite. Yeah. I'm a fan. This is uh, this one could be could be pretty decent as well. You know, I've um, we'll see how it uh, how it goes. So you know, as I was saying uh, on that on that previous beer, um, you know, Horace, uh, his use of adjuncts and and what he. Uh, what he does with these these adjuncts, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, he uses like the highest quality ingredients. So he, uh, you know, he does uh, a lot of like you were mentioning, you know, geisha Good coffee. Lord, it's so we're amazing. Um, we're definitely a geisha coffee, a hundred dollars a pound for your your coffee beans. Kate, um, did you read what was in here? I did. <sighs> Mercy, that's just. Take it. Just take a little no, whip of I'm that. I'm smelling it. I'm. That's what got me all excited. So the the nose is just straight. Yeah, I mean, just coffee, hazelnuts, and coffee, hazelnut coffee. That's unbelievable. I just sit and drink this thing. For, <laughs> that's better. Uh, that's better than most of. You know the, the the worst part about bottles like that. It's maybe Charlie, my new favorite. Well, maybe. The, well, the you know that's good since I. Could only get two bottles. One of them, uh, I gave Lord, you a it tastes just like good it buddy smells. of mine. It smells exactly how it tastes. That's mm. that's oh gosh, that's so good. Wow, unbelievable! Ooh. Just um, super smooth barrel taste. The hazelnuts absolutely come through. That's and I get the a little mildest. Coffee. Yeah, that's the mildest stout. This thing, um, oh. gosh, what's that coming in at? About 3%, Charlie? Why don't you read that on the side of that bottle? 3%? Hopefully it's not 3%. What do you got there? Oh, oh. yeah, 3%. 16.3%. Oh, I thought it, I just Lord. saw that 3% earlier. It's a good thing that bottle's this is uh, a 12 ounce bottle. A 12 ounce bottle. And this, they, um, you don't have any more of these. Yeah, that was it. That was it. I got two of them. Okay. I, hello, hello, Horace. Yeah, the um, uh, I would love to have some snatchers grass. Yeah, I don't know that that happens uh, again for a while. Oh, 
Gosh, he, I I'd mean, be making this every day of the week. That's well, you know, the problem is like the it doesn't come free. It's the, sixteen point three percent. I mean, that's, that's art right that's there. That's wine. Well, that's art. Stout wine. That's a uh, that that's, might be the best beer. It's a I've Mona ever Lisa had. of stouts right there, dude. Oh that's, gosh, that's right up there at the top for me for sure. Just, I mean, I could just sniff this thing all day. Yeah. And still get a contact because of the sixteen percent. Yeah, they. Um, wow, that is a. It's super smooth. I, I guess I don't know mm. much more to to say. I mean that. So the, I like doing the the spirit foul first because it was just a straight, uh, Bourbon straight barrel. Stout. Yeah. No, um, no adjuncts, right? Nothing so in we, there. Uh, yeah. Just a just a. So I mean, you kind of show what he can do with just a stout right there without. Um, well, you know what I said about the proper dose. Now I think this 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 may have knocked that off the top. Well, so just stand by, stand by. I I I believe they're releasing. Um, well, so Kyle, I was I was I was doing a pickup at Forest a couple weeks ago, and and um, Kyle had mentioned that they were. Uh, that this year he's going to release more barrel aged beers than he did his first two years. So the so the the new that I am. I mean, as far as as far as uh, stouts, mm-hmm. this type of stouts. I mean, good lord, I'm dragging so many stouts; it's ridiculous. But these, I have not tasted near as many of these. Yeah, what. How much was he producing then? So, you know, Kyle has a has a pretty unique little setup that he's got going on over there. I mean, he's got a full-time job. So this guy might be, uh, um, I mean, he's definitely, uh, he's got something pretty wild going on. So this guy, um, you know, he was, a, he was a beer judge for a very, very long time. And he said that he kept notes on, uh, I, I believe, uh, I had read a, a website that he had done. Um, he had archived over 10,000 beers that he had drank. And he wow. would always know, and he would always say what the beer was missing. And and um, so he was really, really detailed. And, uh, and if you've ever met uh, Kyle, I mean, he's just a super cool guy. I mean, he's a great guy. And um, I mean, a couple of years ago, he did 55 collaborations all over the country in one year. It's like you, legit. You do that with a full-time job. And, and you know, wife and kids, uh, kid uh, or kids. Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. You but mean so, it's real life? <laughs> yeah, so he does, but he doesn't have a brewery. He has a barrel room. I like barrel rooms. Yeah, so he uh, his his uh, brewery is just um, he's in an industrial park in Oceanside, and uh, you, you drive up there, and uh, it's it's Kyle and uh, a couple other guys. They're they're handing beers out of the back of a warehouse, but no tasting room. No, uh, he doesn't brew on site. He contract brews around town, and uh, so he he totes his beer back to uh, uh, to his warehouse, and then he everything that that he does um, in, in his place. So he makes some you know some regular stouts, but but his um, really the, uh, the his warehouse is for barrel age. The elite so, stuff, yeah, and um, elite it is. They, uh, you know, a this couple years ago, uh, I, we I maybe remember, shouldn't even have cracked this. We probably so shouldn't have. <laughs> probably shouldn't have cracked it. You know, right after the. Well, no, we should have. Absolutely, we should have. Because beer is made to be drank. Yeah, I agree. You know how how bummed out are we now? How bummed out am I that I sat on that thing not, for three months and I'm I could have been uh, drinking it three it, months ago. I'm drinking your zone. beer. I like it. No, the, we'll uh, get into a few of mine. I'm sure at some yeah, point. No, for. No, that's a great beer. I uh, I definitely am excited by that that beer. But the so um, there definitely will be a lot more uh, horse uh, drinking out here. I think our um, our goal uh, I think is to just drink a couple of beers and uh, I I think we just kind of talk about San Diego. We just drank th- four amazing beers. Yeah, those were good. The um, those stouts were were pretty uh, pretty amazing. Well, we jumped yeah. from great beer to amazing beer. So, Dankton's Visible to Pure Projects, or um, Bernie Beards, Dankton's Visible to Pure Projects, uh, thousands of money. Now that was the warmer there, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> it was the warmer upper. 
hit that passion pool as a yeah, warm-up. Yeah, while we were McKellar in the green passion room, pool was the warm-up. while Charlie was getting his makeup done, I was yeah. drinking the uh, well, I was fitting project. the thong. That's what it was. But uh, then we jumped into these two horses. Oh, good lord! Or the pure, the uh, pure collab. So we, we doubled up on Pure, which I didn't expect. I didn't know the horse was in there. Yeah, so, that snatch of grass. I've been sitting on that for a minute, I think, a since minute. last If I'd have known about that, Christmas. that thing would have been deleted from here. Oh, no. So the snatch of grass was just a couple of weeks ago I got that. Oh, hair. was it? Um, it was last year. So, Thanks for the invite. Um, <laughs> Horace does his... Uh, his it's mid year to mid year, so it's like June first to June first, and I want to say that was one of the. So what was his name? Kyle? I don't know him. I've yeah, never Kyle. Even known him. Uh, Kyle Harrop. Um, yeah, he runs Horus. Uh, he's actually the guy on the on the label. If you look so at him, you can see, the spirit uh, guy. It, with it, the... It's it's definitely him with the. It's uh, like with Monty the Montezuma. The uh, if if Monty Montezuma made good beer, yeah, and put clothes on, it's the same guy. <laughs> That's, that's uh, and, a good and one. Really good shoes. Kyle's a big, uh, big shoe guy for all you, uh, all you sneakerheads out there. He Sneaker always has, shoes. Uh, he he certainly is is always matching his shoes with his outfit. Nice. I mean, he must have a a, a pretty large sneaker <laughs> collection. So, what are, are we gonna, are we going to bring anything special in next week or, or next podcast or whatever? Yeah, two I weeks. Think, I think it'll be every two weeks. I think. Um, that gives us a week to get out of jail and, a, mm-hmm. and another week to convince out of the, dog the wives that we... Uh, <laughs> exactly. One week in the doghouse, one week convincing, and then rinse and repeat. We, I need one of those little spritzer cup things, you know, where you spray your bo- your glass and then get ready oh, to drink exactly. the next one. That I'm would be that it. set up right here. Yeah, like, like you have at the breweries. Yeah. I that's, like you. Uh, that's the way to do it. I like you a lot. Yeah, no, those were, were, were definitely some wild beers. I, uh, uh, so once again, just to kind of kind of recap, uh, this is the Podcraft Craft Beer Podcast with Charlie and Chris. Yo, yo. Today we uh, reviewed uh, Burning Beards, Dankness Visible. Pure, pure project. Projects, Thousands, thousands of, of Money. money. Uh, Peer and Horace. Uh, Horace's spirit talent and Charlie's favorite Snatcher's yeah. graph. Yeah, we, yeah I, definitely. I always started off with that one personally, but I well, if if I could get that, if yeah. I could get just that, we wouldn't have this pod yeah, podcast because that'd be the only thing I'd be drinking. That? Is there yeah. a keg available? Yeah, no. no. Heck, with bottling that thing up, we could just mm-hmm. intravenously slug it into our arms. Yeah. Can't imagine what a keg would cost. Oh, probably like 30, 40 beer. bucks. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. <laughs> or, or maybe, maybe a little bit more. Firstborn yeah. child. <laughs> yeah. No. He. Uh... So, Kyle, I thank you for making unbelievable drug. Oh. The gentleman up here. Thank Winslow, you. Winslow. Thank you for what you do. And Mike Burning and Jeff. Beard. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks guys. for what what you guys do. You're doing it right. For sure. Definitely a fan. Look forward to having uh, many more beers with uh, with all of you. Cheers. Hello, this is Tech Guy Steve. This podcast is uh, kind of flying in the air and not totally built yet. Um, we are definitely a work in progress, so to speak. I do want to thank Chris and Charlie for sharing their beer wisdom, insights, stories, and opinions in podcast number one. I learned a lot myself, and I thought the first one went pretty well, given that this is our first time working together. In short order, we're going to make this a pretty fun and informative podcast. You can reach out to the podcast via our website, www.thepodcraft.com. You can connect with us via Twitter at thepodcraft. And we are also on Instagram, also with the handle at the podcraft. And Facebook is also the podcraft. Links to these and everything mentioned in today's podcast will be in our show notes at www.thepodcraft.com. The website will also 
around podcast number three have all the links you need to subscribe to the podcast via Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and any other podcast listening service you might want to use. Right now, the best way to listen is via our website, thepodcraft.com. If you have feedback on the podcast, then please send your thoughts to thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Good and bad feedback is completely welcome. If you have specific suggestions, then send those also. Again, send us your direct feedback via email to thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening to podcast number one of the Podcraft Craft Beer Podcast, and have a great day. The Podcraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.